First, we're joining a group led by herpetologist Jim Andrews to find New England's only lizard, the five lion skink, and a variety of non-venomous snakes. If you can get bit, it's, it's worthwhile. <laughs> then you can say, is that it? You know, because these guys, you remember, I, they got teeth about a millimeter or two long. You know, and what could they possibly do to you? The worst possible thing that they could do to you is bite you, right? But what we first ought to do is just spread out that way, and we just walk through this field. Here's a common garter snake. This is New England's most common snake species by far. Notice the olive head, yellow upper lip, and the three longitudinal stripes. As we get into the taller grass and closer to the water, we may find some other snake species such as eastern ribbon snakes, maybe water snakes, or even eastern rat snakes. This is a rat snake. Oh, that's the beauty. Ooh, yeah. Rat snakes are our biggest species. We've seen rat snakes between six and seven feet long here at this site. Most people are unaware that we have such large snakes in New England. You know, these guys are largely arboreal, and so they're excellent climbers, and to watch these guys climb up a tree with no branches, right up the trunk, Whoa. and you wonder how the heck they could do that without any, without any arms or legs, and then probing into those cavities, the woodpecker holes, maybe disappearing into the inside. Uh, they love old abandoned buildings, old sheds, old barns, where they're feeding on rats, mice, but also uh, eggs and fledglings of birds. Grab first, think later. Northern water snake. The first move is going to be to go to the water and then they'll dive and disappear in the water and, and most snakes won't do that. Generally speaking, these are banded snakes, but as they get older they get darker. They do have a little bit wider heads than most. They have a heavier body than most. So the body shape of this is more like a rattlesnake. It's heavier, thicker bodied. Being a water snake, the diet is primarily frogs, amphibians, fish. But um, all of our snakes are strictly carnivores. As a general rule in Vermont, the snakes that have keels like this give live birth, and the ones that have smooth scales that feel like leather lay eggs. Let's head into the upper field. It's a little tiny guy that was in here. He's gonna, he's gonna escape. Here's another garter snake. This one just caught a northern leopard frog. Garter snakes have no way of killing a frog, so they must eat them alive. It's common to feel sorry for the frogs being eaten, but the snake needs to eat just as much as we do. This may be its first meal in a couple weeks. We humans eat way more animals than snakes do. Watch how those hinged jaws allow the mouth to expand. Snakes can eat more than their own weight in one meal. Let's look along the marsh. Is it milk snake? A lot of people in Vermont call it a spotted adder, and it's not an adder. We don't have any adders in the United States. Patterns or blotches are outlined in black against a lighter background. This is the snake that you're, you're most likely to see at night out on the road, and it's also the one you're most likely to see in your house. You know, it's a, it's a little mammal eater. Here's an eastern ribbon snake. These are a rare snake. There's not very many places in the state where we can show you these. This Actually, this is about the only place where I'd hope with some regularity to show them off. Most of the ribbon snakes that I've seen have a very clear mahogany stripe right down the edge of the belly. The small head is a dark red with a white upper lip. We found quite a diversity of snakes out here in the open. Let's look along the talus slopes for some five-line skinks. 
the uh, the advantage of this rocky talus that we see is the warmth that it provides that soaks up this beautiful sunshine and holds that heat. Here's a juvenile. Although these guys are named common five line skinks, they're very rare in New England. They are our only lizard. Youngsters have a bright blue tail and five clear stripes, but they fade as they age. Adult breeding males are a dull olive brown with red around their jaws. Remember, lizards are reptiles. They are dry and covered with scales, whereas salamanders are amphibians, have no scales, and must stay moist. Skinks are only found in extreme southwestern New England, so southern Vermont, western Connecticut, and Massachusetts. This is a productive area as a result of the variety of habitat types here that are all connected. The wetlands provide food and water, the old fields provide cover, food, and basking sites, and the talus slopes provide warm and safe basking in overwintering locations. We need to maintain all required habitat types and safe travel corridors between them if we hope to have reptiles around in future generations.